What the heck? Darn squirrels! Stop chewing up my wires! <laughs> hey, welcome back to part two of Why Won't Your Phone Charge? In this video, we're gonna do a little experimenting to continue the topic of part one. And I'll give you an easy tip for knowing exactly whether or not your charger is sufficient for charging your device. I'll also discuss a few reasons why your phone or tablet might not charge. If you're new to Life Meet Lightning, we talk about electrical things and other nonsense here, so hit the subscribe button. I try to make things fun, so let's do it. So in the last video, I talked about making sure your power supply is supplying enough current to charge your device. I thought it would be fun in this video to actually measure said current. Well, I also thought it'd be fun to destroy some things. Let's do both. I have this cool little LED crystal light. It's actually a Protoss pylon from StarCraft II. It's an awesome game. It's like speed chess with aliens and explosions. It's cool. Wasted years of my life. <clears throat> anyway, this light is also a USB power supply. It has two USB ports on it. I was curious what kind of current it supplies, so let's measure it. But I promised an easier way, didn't I? I'm sure you aren't interested in doing all this nonsense. So I found a few apps that you can put on your phone or tablet that will measure your charger. I thought I'd compare the results from these apps with what I was actually reading on my multimeter. I've got about four or five hours worth of footage, but I'll spare you and cut right to the point. If you'd like more details about the apps I found, check the description below. I may put together something from all the footage later if you're curious. I'll put a card above and a link in the description if I decide to do that. But here's the thing I found. Two of the apps were just straight up bogus, and the other at least is upfront and honest about the level of accuracy the app provides. However, following the recommended tips they provide in the app, I actually did get somewhat reasonable results from it. So this is the one I'd recommend. It's called Charger Master. If you'd like to give this app a try, the things they recommend doing are turning off all other apps while running the test, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular, turning your screen off while it's testing, and making sure you're testing at room temperature, and making sure that your phone is between 20 and 80% charge. This app gives its result in a watt rating for the charger. In the last video, I talked about finding current from your watt rating by dividing watts by voltage. It actually makes a little more sense for this app to give its result in a watt rating due to a number of factors such as power loss and the supercharging that some devices can do. I'll save all that for the other video though if I decide to make it. We have other things to talk about. In the last video, we looked at what was written on the charger, but what about a computer port? Well, there's a way to look at that as well, and I'll show you. So the first and easiest way is to look at the labels for your USB port on your computer. Most USB ports on a computer these days will have four variations. They'll have the typical USB symbol only. They'll have the USB symbol plus an SS by it. They'll have the USB symbol with a lightning bolt and possibly the SS as well. And lastly, the port itself could be black or another color such as red, yellow, or blue. If your USB port is black or white colored with just a regular USB symbol by it, it's likely just a regular old USB 2.0 or earlier connection, meaning it'll only put out up to 500 milliamps. If it's blue or has an SS next to the regular USB symbol, that indicates that it's a USB 3.0 port or later. SS stands for Supersonic the Hedgehog, since it's faster. Okay, well, it stands for super speed, but same diff. It also means it can put out more current, about 900 milliamps. If the port also has a lightning bolt next to it, this means it can put out up to 1.5 amps, and also likely means it'll stay powered on even when your computer goes into sleep mode. This could also be indicated by a red or yellow colored USB port as well, instead of or in addition to a lightning bolt. This is the case for me. Keep in mind, these port indications are not laws by any means. Manufacturers can do whatever the heck they want, cause freedom. America. But these are just some labeling standards most of them have adopted. If you want to know for sure, you can get some information about your ports in the device manager in your control panel in Windows. Check under Universal Serial Bus Controllers. Oh, that's what USB stands for, by the way. Don't know if I've said that or not yet. And also, I don't have a Mac, so for a Mac, uh, just ask Siri or something. All right, I did say we'd talk about a few other reasons why your phone won't charge. Well, first, chargers do go bad sometimes. I happen to have a bad one. 
If your phone isn't charging at all, try a different charger. Another reason your phone or tablet might not charge would be dirty or obstructed connections. You know, most of us keep our phones in our pockets, purses, or shoes, and what else is in there? Well, there could be many things. French fries, sand, chewing gum, but there's also lint, and sometimes the lint gets in your phone's charging port. Gross. Clean it out. You can use one of those cans of air or a wooden toothpick, carefully and gently. One more thing, try swapping your cable out. Sometimes the cable itself can get worn out, bent, and damaged. And cheap cables are cheap cables too. I've also seen the micro USB port tabs on phones get bent as well. This could happen if you drop it while it's plugged in. I've had luck just gently bending them back, but you might need to use something stronger than a toothpick, like a piece of plastic or something. It's possible the problem lies with your device, but it's not as likely, unless you've just gone swimming with it in your pocket and you're here now wondering why it's not charging. Phones and water don't mix. If you aren't comfy opening it up and doing some exploratory surgery, there are phone and tablet repair shops out there. If your phone did get wet, you could try sticking it in a bag of rice. Rice absorbs moisture and it might be able to absorb all the moisture out of your phone. It's worth a try. All right, be nice to your phone. Don't smash it or go swimming with it and expect it to still charge. Do smash the like button though and tell all your friends. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. This is Life Me Lightning, bringing a little lightning into your life.